Spiders, not the most popular animals out there. Arachnophobia is considered by many sources to be the number one most common fear. Is this fear justified? In my opinion, hell no. But at the same time, I understand why it exists. People tend to be most afraid of what they don't understand. In an attempt to prove my point, I'm gonna list off the five deadliest spiders in the world and tell you why even they shouldn't keep you awake at night. These five spiders will be listed off in no particular order because most deadly can mean so many different things. Venom can't really be measured on a completely linear scale because different toxins do different things to the body. Is venom that causes necrosis more deadly than venom that causes internal bleeding? Not necessarily, it's just different. Also, some spiders are less venomous than others, but far more willing to bite. The amount of venom delivered in a bite also varies from species to species. Not to mention that of the over 45,700 different species of spider, only a percentage of them have had their venom tested in a lab environment. The most potent venom on the planet could belong to a spider that's still yet to be discovered. So there are a lot of factors at play here. I'll try not to overcomplicate things because I'll just end up confusing myself. My name is Jason Miller, and you're watching Five Weird Animal Facts. Number one, the Brazilian wandering spider. In 2010, the Guinness Book of World Records listed the South American beauties as the most venomous spiders on the planet. Their venom contains a potent neurotoxin that causes loss of muscle control and breathing problems. In high doses, this results in paralysis and eventual asphyxiation. Sounds scary, right? Well, what if I told you that Brazilian wandering spiders only inject venom in about one third of their bites? They do this to conserve venom for its main purpose, subduing and digesting prey. Still a bit worried? What if I told you that only 2.3% of bites were considered serious enough to require anti-venom. And even in those cases, anti-venom is so readily available that deaths are becoming less and less frequent. One more thing I forgot to mention. When men are envenomated, one of the side effects includes uncomfortable erections that can last for hours and sometimes lead to impotence. The component of the venom that is responsible for this phenomenon, TX2-6, is being studied for use in erectile dysfunction treatment. Who would have guessed that venom that kills can also cure? Number two, the six-eyed sand spider, another species whose venom is said to be the most toxic of any spider. They're found in the deserts of South Africa and on a shelf that's about five feet away from me. So this is my little six-eyed sand spider family. Got my big adult here, a uh, baby here, and a brand new little tiny baby right here. You're probably thinking what kind of idiot keeps the most venomous, potentially, species of spider on the planet in his home? I'll tell you what kind of idiot. This, this one. So six-eyed sand spiders are very, very, very venomous. In lab tests, it's shown that they have both necrotic and hemolytic venom. This means that their bite could potentially cause uh, necrosis, which is like the breaking down of tissue and rotting of flesh, and also uh, hemorrhaging, which is when you bleed internally and it stops blood from coagulating. So when you bleed, you just continue to bleed until you die. But... These guys are very shy. And there have been no confirmed cases of a six-eyed sand spider biting a human. There are two suspected cases. In one case, a patient had to have their arm removed because of the necrosis, uh, but he survived. The other case, the patient died because of internal hemorrhaging, and that sucks. You know, have not fun times. But they're very shy. <laughs> This is the dumbest thing to defend. I've kept this species for over a year now, and they have never once shown anything that could be considered aggression or any kind of defensive behavior. They're very, very shy, and don't worry, they can't climb glass or acrylic. Um, and even if they could, this lid's too heavy for them to lift. But this guy's out. I kind of shook him out of the sand. But I'll give him little pokes. He just kind of sits there like he's, you know relying entirely on his camouflage and is not even trying to make an advance towards my little wooden stick here. And even when they're out of the sand like this, they still are relying on their camouflage because they have little cuticles and hairs on their body that sand sticks to. So they end up blending in with their environment. That's why I have one in red sand here. This one has a more red tint to him and this one has a more white tint to him because uh, the sand sticks to that setae on their bodies and is fantastic camouflage even when they're not buried. The reason they bury themselves is because they can't spin webs, they have no spinnerets or anything, and they don't uh, dig burrows because they're where they live, uh, the soil isn't built to be burrowed into, it's sand. It's very loose and it collapses easily. So what these guys do is they dig a little divot for themselves, push their bodies into it, cover their faces and their bodies, and then kind of wiggle their legs until their entire body is covered by sand. They wait up to a year 
for a small insect or something to walk by and then they pounce out and grab it and they don't really have to worry about predators too much because no predator can see them. Number three, the brown recluse. Belonging to the same family as the six-eyed sand spider, the brown recluse shares the trait of being relatively shy, hence the name recluse. But these guys do enjoy hanging out in and around human habitation, making encounters in their range fairly frequent. That being said, a lot of spiders are misidentified as brown recluses. The best way to ID one is by looking for the violin-shaped marking behind its head. This pattern has also earned it the name Violin Spider. Despite its fierce reputation, the spider only bites when it feels trapped. And envenomation can only happen when the spider makes direct contact with the skin because its fangs are too small to penetrate most fabrics. When a rare bite does occur, there isn't always an immediate reaction other than a small sting. But up to eight hours later, severe pain is followed by a red blister which can eventually rot off to form a deep, gross ulcer and occasionally become gangrenous. In a study of clinically diagnosed brown recluse bites, necrosis occurs roughly 37% of the time and systemic illness only occurs about 14% of the time. All of this being said, brown recluse bites resulting in death are very, very rare. Number four, the black widow spider, probably the most notoriously dangerous species of spider found in North America. And whoops, I have one of those too. All right guys, this is my black widow spider. More specifically, Western Black Widow, Lyrodectus asparis. She is full size. She's an adult female. And the way you can tell that is that the females are black and widowy. Sorry, they're black in color. And the males are uh, brownish and a lot smaller. Males of the species, their venom uh, doesn't really affect humans. They, they're completely harmless. Females do have venom that's potent enough to have a pretty serious effect. Nobody's died from a Western Black Widow spider bite since the 1950s, I believe. Um, but from what I've heard from people who've been bitten by them before, it's like the worst stomach cramping and the most horrible stomach pain you can imagine. Uh, and it just lasts for 48 hours straight. Doesn't sound like fun, but uh, it's not necessarily deadly. All right, guys, so here's the deal. Why am I not worried about being bitten right now? As you can see, she's just kind of hanging out there. She's not moving towards my fingers. She is just enjoying her web. Uh, if she does get too close, obviously I'm going to pull my finger away. But she's not really uh, too worried about me right now. The reason behind that is she's not defending a nest. That's when they're at their most defensive. When she has an egg sac on her web, she will come at anything that touches it. Which is understandable. She wants to... You know, make sure her babies don't die. The only other time that uh, bites happen is when they feel trapped or pinned. So if she was on this table right now and I put my hand down and she was underneath my hand, she would bite me because she felt trapped, like her life was in danger. And you can't really blame any animal, not just spiders, for biting or envenomating when they feel like their life is in danger. I mean, what would you do in that situation? It's never a spider's fault when a human is bitten by a spider. It is either the human's fault or it's just a pure accident. And listen, guys, I'm not doing this because I'm trying to show off how tough or brave I am. When I'm holding this Black Widow spider's web and when I'm messing with the six-eyed sand spiders, I'm not sh trying to show you how fearless I am. I'm just kind of showing how unlikely a bite is and how misplaced our fear of these animals is. So that should be the takeaway from this. Number five, the Sydney funnel web spider. Located within a 65 mile radius of Sydney, New South Wales, Sydney funnel webs are arguably the most deadly spiders in Australia. Most human encounters with this spider occur with males of the species who will leave their burrows at night in order to search for females. As soon as the sun rises, these humidity-loving arachnids search for a wet area to lay low until the next night. Unfortunately, this often results in the spider ending up in or around swimming pools. And unlike other spiders on this list, Sydney funnel web spiders don't shy away from a threat, often raising up their front legs and showing off their fangs in a threat display. 
If this warning is ignored or simply not seen, the spider will sink its long fangs into its attacker and often maintain a tight grip and bite repeatedly. The venom of a male Sydney funnelweb spider is roughly six times more potent than that of a female. The venom contains a compound called a trachotoxin, which is highly toxic to the nervous system of humans and other primates, but has no effect on other mammals. Doesn't that make you feel special? The bite is very painful, and life-threatening symptoms often set in about 20 minutes to an hour after envenomation. Fortunately, Sydney is a very urbanized area, and there's always easy access to medical treatment. In fact, there hasn't been a single death from a Sydney funnelweb spider bite since antivenom became available in 1981. We'll just check this guy off the list of things in Australia that can kill you. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments down below what animals and topics you want to see in future episodes. Like and share this video and subscribe to Animal Bites TV for more awesome animal things and stuff. If you feel like it, check out all my social media garbage. And until next time, my friends, my name is Jason Miller, and I'll see you next Monday on 5 Weird Animal Facts.